Elon Musk wasn't the first person to describe the concept of high-speed travel via capsule and low-pressure tube. There are similar concepts going back more than 100 years. But even so, his 2013 Hyperloop Alpha technical white paper captured the imagination of engineers and business people alike. Two companies at the forefront of the race to commercialize Hyperloop as a way of travel are Hyperloop One and its rival Hyperloop Transportation Technologies. And ever since these two companies launched their own independent bids to bring this super-fast, carbon-neutral form of travel to the world, Hyperloop has never been far from the headlines. As regulars to this channel will know, the Hyperloop system still has plenty of technical, legislative and financial challenges that lay ahead of it before it can become a mainstream commercial entity. But this week, Hyperloop One took one massive step towards making Hyperloop a reality when its experimental XP1 pod was accelerated to nearly 200 miles per hour and back to rest inside Hyperloop One's dev loop track outside of Las Vegas, Nevada. It's quite the step up we saw from the test from Hyperloop One in May when the company sent a test dolly along the full size track to test its propulsion system. In that test, the dolly only reached a speed of 70 miles per hour, accelerating at about 2G to reach that speed before gradually decelerating and safely coming to a stop. But the most recent test used the full-size lightweight carbon fiber XP1 experimental Hyperloop capsule, accelerating to an impressive 192 miles per hour, 308 kph, in just under 1,000 feet, 300 meters, before safely bringing that capsule to a controlled stop. And that should get you really excited, because this is the first full-scale test to prove that Hyperloop can become a reality. And since Hyperloop relies on electricity to power its capsules at breakneck speeds, and could theoretically get that power from renewable sources of electricity, it represents a future mass transit system that can get people and goods across continents and countries without burning any fossil fuels. Given the airline industry is expected to produce one quarter of all carbon emissions by 2050, it currently produces 12%, and ground-based industrial freight is another major source of pollution, a working Hyperloop could change the planet for the better. But enough rose-tinted specs. Back to what's actually happened at Hyperloop One with this fantastic test. To achieve this kind of speed, Hyperloop One depressurized the Hyperloop test tube, which it calls DevLoop, to 3.27 times 10 to the negative 3 PSI absolute, or 2.2 times 10 to the negative 2 kilopascals absolute. Or if you prefer, the air pressure you'd find soaring to 200,000 feet, which is 37.9 miles or just over 60 kilometers above sea level, more than twice the cruising altitude of the U-2 spy plane, and two-thirds of the way to space. Ultimately, Hyperloop One wants to get its XP1 traveling faster than the speed of sound, and given the low pressure inside the tube, that's entirely possible given what we've seen thus far. Indeed, since the capsules hover above the tracks thanks to the wonders of electromagnetism, meaning there's very little friction to cause drag, and the atmosphere inside the tube is so low, meaning there's very little aerodynamic drag, the speed of the capsule is really only restricted by the capability of the Hyperloop One control system, the amount of power its electromagnets can produce, and of course, the safety and cooling systems needed to ensure neither the pods nor the tracks overheat. At least, that's true if we're talking about cargo-only travel. But for human occupancy, Hyperloop One is going to have to deal with some other challenges it hasn't yet tackled. I'm talking about ensuring that the capsules stay properly pressurized at all times and have the same kind of safety measures as airplanes do to ensure that people are safe in the event of a sudden depressurization. That and dealing with a whole host of other things, such as station design, safely dealing with onboard emergencies like power failures, and of course, bringing the cost of this all down so it's commercially viable. We're still a long way from Hyperloop becoming a ubiquitous transportation system, but despite my early skepticism, I can finally see the possibility, assuming all the technical challenges are met, that Hyperloop could have the same impact on the way we travel that the birth of the train or the automobile did. The pair Hyperloop with automated pod-like cars that will pick you up and drop you off at your final destination, which is something that Hyperloop One has hinted its system will include, and we're looking at a future where personal transportation will look very different indeed. 
In fact, assuming all the challenges are met, I could see Hyperloop eclipsing even the mighty Tesla electric car. It might have been Elon Musk's craziest idea to date, but it seems that where there's a will and technical prowess, there's a way. And I, for one, hope it manages to reach commercial viability. Sadly, I'm still not convinced it will, but I guess time will tell. That's it. Thanks for joining me and see you next time. <laughs>